Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon, so please take a moment to hear what they're about. MIB here, I'm a serial junkie and I've been for most of my life, but when I'm thinking about my health, especially now as an adult, I gotta think a little smarter. You might have already heard your favorite YouTubers or podcasters talking about Magic Spoon, which is redefining the breakfast cereal. It comes in flavors that sure get my nostalgia going, like cocoa, peanut butter, fruit, and frosted, but it is low-carb, low-calorie, soy-free, gluten-free, grain-free. 13 to 14 grams of protein, but the thing that's important to me is it's made with zero grams of sugar. And yet, due to the magic of natural flavoring, you wouldn't guess any of that. Click the link in the description and use the promo code BUDDIES to get $5 off your order of Magic Spoon. I recommend you build yourself a variety pack. I can testify that each cereal is delicious on its own, but I've enjoyed mixing and matching my bowls. The cocoa and peanut butter cereals together are... Mm -mm. Mm. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click my link in the description and use the code BUDDIES to save $5 today. And thank you Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Playtime! Yay! If you were a child in the US in the 1980s or early 1990s, there's a decent chance that this is your Godzilla. This is the Imperial Godzilla action figure. It was my first ever Godzilla related toy and I'm not alone. This guy was everywhere and your only real option for a Godzilla toy for quite a bit. He came from the Imperial Toy Corporation, a company that started in downtown Los Angeles on April 1st, 1969. Imperial was founded by Fred Court, a Holocaust survivor and philanthropist. Look him up, he has a truly remarkable story. And it might put all your Imperial toys into a brand new context. The Imperial Toy Company's first item was high bouncing balls called Teeny Bouncers. Through the decades and exchanges of ownership, Imperial tended to keep things small. Balls, yo-yos, die-cast cars and vehicles. But as time went on, in an effort to secure more retail space, Imperial got into the licensing game. The Jetsons, Mad Balls, and more recently, Nickelodeon, Marvel, and Hello Kitty. Imperial was capitalizing on big monsters even before they received official licenses, like Hong Kong Gorilla from 1976. And in the early 1980s, a line called Dragons, Knights, and Daggers mixed in all sorts of creative beasts. And Imperial was in the dinosaur game too. Around this time period, through the rest of the 1980s and into the early 1990s, the West was being bombarded with similar molds of dinosaurs and dragons, and yes, Godzilla knockoffs from companies from China and Hong Kong. It's overwhelming. Tracking all of this is a task I'm just not ready for right now. But I'm bringing it up because back then, it really was confusing with what was official and what wasn't. So for today's video, we're gonna stick to officially licensed Imperial Godzilla releases. Including this classic Godzilla figure available in two sizes. Known for its unique mold, his silver chest spot, and the fact that he looks like he just made out with your mom. Seriously, what's with the lipstick all around his mouth? This Godzilla was around until at least 1992, and that's seven years of being the most accessible, exciting Godzilla figure. They could be sold in retail boxes like this one in 1985, or this box here I have from 1992. Check out the art. Godzilla got hit with the Joker's laughing gas. Why is his neck so long? He looks like a turtle who lost his shell. He looks like he should be hiding in an asteroid waiting for the Millennium Falcon. Oh, well, like, what is that, a tiny building he's holding? And what's this little speck on his knee? Is he standing on an endless, twinkling hardwood floor? Small guys were also available in packaging similar to this. This just feels like a waste of plastic. It looks like he's jumping over a hurdle. In the mid-1980s, Imperial had the King Kong license as well, and their Kong figures and Godzilla figures dueled each other in many childhood bedrooms. Even though they just don't scale right. Maybe this is closer to accurate. Here's a real rarity. At one point in time, Imperial packaged Godzilla and Kong with Dracula and Frankenstein's monster, and they called it the Clash of the Movie Monsters. Now that's a tag team match. But it wasn't just action figures, they also had bubble-blowing Godzilla. This is one of the most unique pieces of Godzilla merch I've ever seen. Blow into his tail, and it makes a continuous stream of bubbles. Look at this poor kid. 
He knows the internet's coming. He knows this video is in his future. Right now, this kid's somewhere hitting a bong, and he's not exactly sure how that whole thing started. Come on, don't make me write jokes for this. Look, kid, just don't try this with Shin Godzilla, all right? This is an unusual contraption, and it should be. It's patented. First, a quick look at the figure. Amazingly, he has articulation in his legs here and the arms. The tail and head look like they could turn, mine don't. And he's got googly eyes. Or, or one googly eye. This eye over here is stuck. It, um, it refuses to google. You give Godzilla some bubble fluid and it all stays in his head. This big hollow body doesn't fill up with bubble fluid or anything, it's mostly empty. Then you blow into his tail and the air carries to the end of the tailpiece, which is walled off, except for a tube. The tube carries the air all the way up the body and spins the piece in the mouth that produces bubbles. Like this. That's bubbles, all right. A small variety, but it's still bubbles. You have to blow with some force because the air has some traveling to do. So you can't give it a gentle wind like you would with a bubble wand. You gotta blow! Blow into that tail! You just don't see many Godzilla items like this. I don't have this one, but let's acknowledge Imperial Spark E Godzilla with a high speed friction motor and sparking action. Is this a car engine or a Godzilla toy? You might have seen this mold somewhere, even if it wasn't this Imperial toy. It's gotta be the same mold Takara used in Japan, and it's often bootlegged too. I'm just in it for this Godzilla card art. Imperial released four different sets of Godzilla action stickers. Each set includes three large lenticular stickers, images that change when you see them from different angles. There are all sorts of cool pictures of Godzilla destroying things, but also a couple of notable appearances. Here's the Super X taking a swing at the Big G. And this sticker's got Mecha Godzilla on it. Whoa! Looks like he's inspired by Akihiko Iguchi's original design, too. Really cool. If you don't know what to do with stickers, the back's got you covered. You can trade them with friends. Give them as gifts. You could decorate your notes, your roller skates, your toes, your fingers, your ears. That's not what you do with stickers, especially big ones like this. This column says stick'em, which is literally the same thing as the decorate column, but this column suggests that you can put them on note books, raincoats, hats, mittens, and flower pots. Did the guy who wrote this just kind of look around his room as he made up the list? So back to Mechagodzilla. Kind of random that he appears just on one sticker, but here's a scan of a spread from a dealer's magazine that shows a Mechagodzilla toy in the Imperial lineup. Yeah, there would have been a pretty big Mechagodzilla that shoots sparks from his mouth. Shame that didn't come into fruition. Moving over to the inflatables, back in 1978 when GLJ had the Godzilla license, they made a bop bag. Well, Imperial followed suit in 1985 and 1992. First, we'll inflate the 1985 bag. Here we go, this is a 48 inch bop bag. So this image in the background is actually a picture of a Godzilla action figure, a Bondi Poppy 18 inch toy from the previous year. The image is kind of in the back of the bop tube while up in the front there's the logo and some more art. Look at this Super X wannabe. It's the Super X. Ah, it's a cool ship. But does it bop? I don't want to destroy this thing with my mighty fist, so I'll just give it a gentle tap. No, no, it does not bop. Moving on to the 1992 box and oh, why is everything about this feel like a porn parody? From Godzilla's phallic head to the weird placement of the 3D burst to the fact that there's another Godzilla up here humping the G in his own logo. The 1992 bop bag was profoundly harder to inflate. The first bag has a normal inflation knob, but this one's knob needs to be pinched real good to get air in and less air gets in, so it takes more breaths. This bop bag is also 48 inches, but it was also released as 36 inches with the same art. This one's got no art in the foreground. It's got the 92 logo, 
and then that weird giraffe neck Godzilla. And he's on the standard floor being attacked by a generic plane and tank. I prefer the 85 bag. But does it bop? <laughs> yes, the 92 bag bops. It bops very well. In 1985, Imperial released a six-foot inflatable Godzilla. And look at it strangling this kid! Looks like this other Godzilla's rushing in to stop him before the lawsuits start. I think the six-foot was the only size they made in 1985, but in 1992, oh boy, they made a four-foot, a five-foot, a six-foot, an eight-foot inflatable Godzilla! No matter how tall you are, there's a Godzilla to scale one-to-one -one with you. I wish I had them all so I could line them up, but I do have the five-foot version. Caution, do not use as a life preserver. Who the hell would? Godzilla's a life destroyer, not a life preserver. It's got the harder to use inflation nozzle and more than one of them. I'm getting seriously lightheaded. I had to order a hand pump for this one. But here it is, the now classic inflatable Godzilla toy. Finally, a Godzilla to scale with my action figures. Most of these inflatable toys come with repair patches in case they get a rip, but even with patches, they just can't last forever. That's why working inflatables are getting harder and harder to find. Imperial Godzilla toys really left the mark on American pop culture, besides the fact that they have high general familiarity. They can also be seen in American movies and TV shows. For example, the inflatable can be seen in the 1988 movie Big with Tom Hanks, and if you look closely, you'll spot another Godzilla on the vending machine. There's an Imperial Godzilla permanently residing in the living room in the sitcom Roseanne and its sequel The Connors. In the original show, sometimes there appeared to be two of them. And of course, there's Imperial Godzilla merch in the 1998 Michael Bay film Armageddon. That's everything I've got on Imperial Godzilla toys, a major piece of American Godzilla toy history. I want to give a quick research shout out to PlaidStallions.com. Always a great resource for this vintage merch. I leaned on him a lot this video, so please go check out his website at PlaidStallions.com. Great stuff. I know for a fact that a lot of you viewers had some of these items, so be sure to share your memories in the comments section. Thanks for watching Playtime, where we celebrate imagination, play together, and maybe learn something we didn't know.